I want you to feel very, very comfortable in asking questions as long as those questions can be answered in the span of time that we have or don't require some preset things. And I'm going to show you a couple of preset things that will help you drastically. Okay. Thank you, Pete. I appreciate that. And we will um, we will get started. So I'm going to jump over to the canvas and put this screen down and I want to jump over here to the canvas. And I, I'm going to talk about this in just a little bit, but I'm not going to talk about it first. Instead, I want to come over here and we're going to talk about some very basic one on one kind of things. <laughs> Larry, good to see you, man. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I recognize the face, but for some reason, the name always comes up registered. All right, we're going to cover some really, really cool stuff here in putting together some very, very basic stuff with Uzine that I promise you will make your work from this day forward drastically more fun. Okay, does that sound like a good idea to everybody? All right, cool. There is, I, I get, I hear this question, I hear this comment a lot. Something's not intuitive. Well, I, intuitive is a, is a very, very opinionated kind of a, a position, but there's an intuitiveness that's built into computer design. And, and from the user experience, there's some things that once you understand what they are, where you go from there is drastically improved. Okay, so let's talk our way. I'm going to talk my way around the canvas area that you see right here on your screen. We're going to begin at the very top because everything that happens here is affected by what you have at the very top of your screen. I have this set up today because we're going to talk about mock design later. I have my, I have my preset design as a mock design desktop. If I want to know what size a mock design desktop is, it's right there at the end of that row, but I can't read that. And so I always just click on the custom size. Once I pick my, my preset, I click on the custom size. That allows me to have other features and functionality available. Like I can set my DPI from right here. All right. The second thing that I can do, and I'm working my way from the left-hand side of the menu uh, across the top to the right. The second thing that I can do, not only can I set my DPI here, I have three options, 72 DPI, which is fine for all of your, your web properties, uh, 150 DPI, which is gonna work in most cases, and 300 DPI if you're using print on demand kind of services like that. So I, I have the ability to be able to set my, my, um, my size once I am in, and notice what happens when I do this. Once I go back to the preset, and I select mock design desktop, then I still have this dimension up here, but I don't have any way to change it, all right? So without the ability to change that, it doesn't do me any good. So I'll go back up here to my custom size, and then that opens up a new, a new set of menu for me. Everybody see that? You understand what we're talking about here? Okay, so the very first thing is, I'm gonna figure out what size I want my canvas area to be, and that's determined by the menu that you have right here. There's lots and lots of presets, but the presets you have to take sometimes with a grain of salt. For example, and I'm gonna give you a, a, a thorough lesson on this in just a minute, but if you look at product cover right here, the product cover inside of Uzign is for a ebook, or an ebook. If you go to create some other type of a product with it, then you'll want to make sure that you use the sizes that are determined, that are, are, are required for the platform that you're using. Just because it says product cover or Kindle cover doesn't mean that that's necessarily the size that you should use. Check with the output that you're trying to, that you're going to put that cover on to make sure that, that cover is the size that it's supposed to be. And I'm going to show you an example of that when we talk about covers in a little bit. So we're going to spend some time on that in a little bit. Hello, Wayne. Good to see you. Perry as well. So working my way across 
this menu at the top. Anything that I want to do to this canvas area, I will do with the menu across the top of my work area, okay? So this is now, th that particular size from my design is 920 by 1080. That will fit perfectly inside of the mock design design. In fact, the picture that you saw that I posted in the group this morning was this picture right here inside of a mock design mock-up that I used to uh, uh, place in the announcement this morning. Okay, Good morning, Tammy. If I need to crop this area, I can't crop it when I'm down here in the mock design, I go back to my, my desktop image, I can't crop this area because it's preset for this size. If I want to crop it, I go up here to custom size, I turn the custom size on, now that crop menu is available. Once you understand the logic, the intuition behind what's happening, then everything becomes easy. Answer this question frequently for people all over the place. And that is, how come the crop menu is not available? It's because you're in a preset. If you want to crop this area right here, then you need to be in a custom size because the preset, you can't change because it's preset. The custom size, you can change. And so that makes this crop menu available. Okay. That makes sense to everybody. You starting to understand why we're doing this today? All right. The next thing that we come to is... Over here, it says show all off canvas elements. Now, there are times when this area up here will have something in it. The area around the outside of my canvas will have around my work area. And I, that's what I use. I use this to describe my work area. The outside lines around the outside of this, that's the canvas itself. That's the total area, okay? But if I want to show those things that are off of this, and you'll notice that means that this image is running off the top. See that? When I turn this uh, canvas elements on, then it shows the stuff that's not visible inside of the area. All right, this saves you a lot of time. Anybody ever lose something? They pull this up here into this area and then they can't find it. Have you ever done that before? Tell me if you've done that before. And you go, I know it's there somewhere. I just had it. Well, the, the thing that you need to do is to turn on the off canvas elements right here. And when you turn that on, it'll, it'll show what's there, okay? So you can see that still shows that, but it disappears when I turn it off. That will save you pulling your hair out. The next thing is the smart lines. And the smart lines are kind of a, a tool that was built into the, the, the flash mechanism. I don't know. I'll be curious to see what happens when, um, when, when we go to the, next, to the next thing. Every once in a while, people would have a problem positioning an, an image just right, correct. So we had this turn smart lines on and off. I don't know that that will continue to carry over. The other things is that you can save your image. And when you, I click on save the image, what it does is it goes down to my desktop. When I save as, it's going to save it in my dashboard on Uzine. All right. Does that make sense to everybody? Sometimes I get asked that question at least once a webinar. Another thing to remember is this little preview right here. Now, I, I don't think the preview is available for MockDesign. I don't think it is. I'll turn that back on, but I don't think the preview is available for that. It's not. Um, but if you, if I had this image as a mock-up for um, a Facebook image, let's see if I, how close I'll be on Facebook. I think this is. I think this is about the same size as Facebook large. So we'll do the Facebook large. Yes, throw it out of throw it completely out of whack. But when I turn this preview on, it actually shows what it looks like in the Facebook. All right. That preview area is really cool. Uh, something that you want to remember that you can do because every once in a while it helps when you're going to show something to a client or you're going to show someone uh, how to do something really cool. And the the thing about the preview and there's the, we have previews for some, but not for everything. Um, 
But the thing about the preview is that it reminds you that there's other stuff besides just, particularly for the Facebook ads. Um, that's a good question, Kim. I'll sh I, I don't have time today to do that, but, um, I, but I will address that. I've addressed it before. Kim's asked the question, be good if you had print safe lines on things that maybe the preview would let you, uh, would let you guesstimate. Um, I, I'm going to show you where I get that from, but I can't do it in today's webinar. But that's a great question, Kim. I will try to remember that. I go back and read your comments to make sure we haven't missed anything. So I'll try to remember to do that as we prep for, as I prep for the next, the next webinar. Takes a little preparation for that. I have to go find one and, and make that make it that available and import that and some additional things but that's a great question kim thank you for that i appreciate that all right working our way around here now now i i, I and then i can download okay uh this takes me back out to my dashboard now if i select the background right here because the background is an image this menu on the right becomes available one thing I want you to notice is that there's a different menu for images than there is for text. Yes, yes, you can download. That's a great question, Timmy. You can download the preview right here. And, and when you download the preview, then you can show it to clients. That's, I, I should have completed my sentence there but that's correct yeah if i was back on the the facebook then you would be able to download that entire preview with the three different versions of that uh and, and everything that goes with that so yes you can download the previews and it's pretty cool you can't save them but you can download them all right okay any questions, keep, keep them coming. Now we're going to work down this right-hand menu over here because if I'm on the image, I get one set of instructions on this menu. If I'm on the text area, I get a different set of instructions. Do you notice that? Every once in a while, people ask a question, well, I, can't, I don't find that on the menu. It's because there's a difference between the image menu and the text menu. Okay. Is that clear? Because if I want to work on, I'm gonna give you a really simple little logical rule here. If I wanna work on this area right here, I'm using the menu down the right-hand side and it's going to adjust itself whether I'm on an image or if I'm on text, okay? If I wanna add something to this screen, I use the menu on the left-hand side. I have the edit menu on the right hand side, which is dynamic. It changes based upon the type of uh, um, thing, the type of thing, the type of element that I'm working on on the canvas. Okay. Everybody with me? That's my cue to let me get a drink. Okay. But if I'm working on this area right here inside of the canvas, I'm going to use my right hand menu based upon the different kind of element that I'm using. Uh, no, Robin, that's a really good question. In fact, we dedicated an entire webinar to that at one point in time. So I even have the templates saved on my dashboard. And when we finish today, I'll pull that back up and show you. Okay. Um, because because we I have them and so you can do that all right I actually think that the the one that I saved as a template from the demo that we did that day I think that that element is turned in portrait mode rather than in landscape but all you do is just flip the width and the height all right but but you'll you, we'll, we'll we'll do that don't let me forget before we get finished okay all right now if I'm if I'm working on this area over here, then I over on the canvas, when I select whatever it is that I'm working on, then I have a different menu over here with the exact tools that I'm going to need in order to make it work. Make sense to everybody? 
if I want to add something to this, I go to my left hand menu. And from the left hand menu, those elements I can put on my on my canvas in my work area. The next thing I want you to see is that when I select this, this text menu appears. And when the text menu appears, I have the universal icon for save that's selected right here. Are you all seeing that? It's right next to the font area. All right, so when I select this text area and, I, and my save button shows up, when I select the save button, I have just saved that font right here. That's how you add this font elements to your left-hand menu so that you can pull them onto your canvas at a later date. You use that little save icon right here. Okay. Now, this question comes up all the time and it's come up this week. And this week we had the, the question about system fonts. The question about system fonts comes up all the time. System fonts are down here. System fonts are different than the fonts inside of Uzine. System fonts are loaded onto your computer. They are not loaded into your browser. They have nothing to do with whether you're on Chrome or uh, Firefox or Brave or whatever browser that you're using. Those system fonts reside on your computer. Uzine grabs those fonts from inside of your computer and makes them available right here, but they're available with great limitation to them. You see, I can do really cool stuff with this, with this right here, but the moment that I change that to Arial Black, I can no longer rotate it because that font's not designed to be rotated. All right. So just remember that you have some limitations with system fonts that you do not have with Uzine fonts. So uh, 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 always, 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 always try to use Uzine fonts for everything that you do and, and your life will be easier. You can go through and we, did, we dedicated a whole Friday to this one time. You can go through, you can save the font as, a, as an image, you can do things with the image, but we're not gonna get into that today because my point is I want you to understand that you have two different kinds of menus on your right-hand side over here based upon the type of an element that you're working on. And that makes it work really well, okay? Kim, if we built a preset for absolutely everything that people wanted, you would get lost in the menu. I understand. So that's the reason why we spent a whole Friday on, on that one day is how do we how do I create those, save them as templates and make them available? Because we're get, we run out of room, we run out of space, and then it gets lost in the shuffle. And we have enough people getting, we have enough trouble getting lost. I have enough trouble getting lost in the shuffle as it is. All right, let's go back. Oh, okay, so over here, we have all, all of these things over here. If I'm going to add anything, if I want to add something, I'm going to find it on the left-hand side. If I want to modify something, I'm going to find it on the right-hand side. No, Robin, the fonts that you choose in the branding app may be different than Uzign fonts. And you can't add, you don't add fonts to Uzine. You add them to your system. Uzine finds those fonts. This, a font is a computer program. Thing that really is hard for people to understand. It looks like it, it's a font, but it's actually a mini computer program that tells the computer how to render that font visually. And this font is built in a system that allows you to be able to do this with the font. System fonts are computer programs that don't allow you to do that. So that's the reason for, for making sure that you understand there's a difference between how those two fonts function. Okay? All right, now we're gonna, we're gonna take some of the things that we learned over the last couple of webinars, and we're gonna talk about them today as to how they relate to this particular function right here. So I've got my element is, let's talk Uzine 101. I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna select the special effects tool. And by selecting the special effects tool, 
I have done. Now, I, I'm hoping that you can see the difference. Tell me if you can see the difference between, let's talk Uzine 101 without a shadow and with a shadow. So this is it without the shadow. This is it with the shadow. Okay, Joe's new and so he's asking a question and this question has to do with flash. And the fact is that we're going to, we're, we're flash is gonna be rolled out. We'll have the uh, uh, flash is going to go away at the end of December. And um, what that go away means, we don't really know, but the, I'm, I'm fixing to play with that in just a second, Tony, hang on. Um, but when, when we're in the process of moving to an HTML5 platform, that platform is getting pretty close to ready to roll out. And when it does, everything will look exactly the same. That's the reason why this training is applicable regardless of which of the two platforms we're on. And the everything everything will work the same. You'll still have your images, you'll still have your templates, you'll still everything that you had previously will be available in the HTML5 version. That will be pushed out to your accounts sometime in the very, very near future, and you have nothing to be concerned about whatsoever. Just kind of ignore that. You get that not only when you when you log into UZI, but you get it with a lot of other things telling you that Flash is going to go away. Okay? Now, here's what is being said about my little... For me, this looks really, really good. When I turn that shadow off, it starts to kind of blend in. Um, and so what I've done is I've turned the, this, I've turned the um, shadow on and I'm going to move the distance out so you can see what I'm talking about here. I'm going to increase the opacity. I'm going to make that look a little wild. And then you see when you flip this around, it's pretty obvious. But for me, that little subtle change That little subtle change of not having it distance out quite so far. And which direction do you read? Help me with this one. This will help you drastically. So these are the little things that you find on this menu over here that can make a big difference in how you, how you present your, your text. If I flip this to this direction right here, you start from the upper right. So if I flip this so that it, it's, it's facing in the upper right hand direction and I reduce the opacity and reduce the distance, it gives me that depth that makes it easier for me to read that. And yet it doesn't look in your face. This can, can kind of blend in. I picked those colors on purpose because I wanted you to see what happens when you when you turn that shadow on. That's all I had to do was just turn that shadow on very lightly. And, um, and I've got it pretty dark so you can see it, but it makes a huge difference. And because you read from right to left, you won't notice the shadow as much as you do if I turn it this direction. It's one of those really weird things that your eye does. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Do you understand now why we have this little, we're talking about this little tool over here, the little shadow tool, uh, the special effects tool, and how you can use that special effects to just boom, make that thing pop and on you go. So I've gone from this being not as clearly distinguished to make it Oh, that works great. So it's a single click of a mouse. It's not something that's complicated. It's not something that's hard. And the other thing to think, to pay careful attention to is that I can drastically change this as well. All right. This background right here has a white slur in it anyhow. So using that shadow as a white might even be better. But that's, that's a matter of personal opinion, but those are things that you can do. Okay. This image right here um, I, I had actually saved that from a previous webinar that we did. It does give it a, Larry, you're right. It does give it a really slight um, 3D effect, but not a real bold 3D effect. And you can ach achieve that with, with a boldness if you want to do that. In fact, we might even play with that 
not this week, but next week, uh, how to achieve that 3D effect. But this was an image that we had saved, um, that I saved from when we did a webinar several weeks ago when I had my grandson with me because he absolutely loves that image. We saved it and it's a little, it's got some transparency to it. Do you see that? I saved it with the transparency to it, which makes this, this background here, this blue background, which is underwater, makes that show up better here with that slightly transparent sort of a background. And, um, and the way you achieve that is right here is your opacity. And I can turn that way down. And again, it depends on where it's at as to what that does to it. So anytime you change the opacity of an image, you want to pay careful attention to what you have behind it because the, what you have behind it is going to make a difference, right? Everybody with me so far? Any questions about the logic as to why things are laid out where they are? That eliminates you hunting and searching for things. Because you know it should just be there. In fact, in the group and in the private messages and other things, I answer 95% of the questions that people ask without ever looking at Uzine. Because I know automatically where things are. And that helps. Can you imagine how much faster you can go if you know where things are at automatically? Can you imagine how much faster it is? And I do that on purpose. I, I want to get myself into that kind of muscle memory sort of a thing where I know that somebody says, I can't find where I changed the whatever. And I say, which element are you selected? Then it'll be the third option down. Okay. Thank you. Rob has posted the, um, the, the area where the recordings are at. You will not find those recordings that are, the sequence has been broken several times for several reasons. We had some reasons for breaking that sequence. So don't think that you're missing something. They're just done that way for a reason. Okay. All right. So if you understand the logic this year, let's move to the next issue. And I want to show you something that I think will help you drastically. All right. We're going to move over here to a product cover, and I just grabbed something, made a product cover out of it real quick. This was actually a Pinterest pin that I had, but I have to customize. I have to make a custom size for the product covers for the output that I use because my output, my, my product creator requires that my cover be 816 by 1056. Instead of trying to take a, a, a preset cover in Uzine and make it fit inside of there, I went over and found out what the size is in the, in the, um, I, I went over and found the size that my cover needed to be in the output that I was going to use. And from the output, then I was able to select uh, the custom size to be exactly the right fit for the output that I'm looking for. If you're trying to make something inside of Uzine work, then it may not reflect what your output's going to be. If you under, always understand where, remember, begin with the end in mind. That end is what's my output going to be, and I have to know that. You have to go to whatever it is that you're going to create. This is going to be the cover for an ebook that I'm using. I have an ebook creator, and that ebook creator requires a certain size cover. Does that make sense? Did you follow that, Robin? So that's where I get my output from. And then I take the output and I build my custom size based upon that. Okay. Now that also allows me over here to be able to adjust my DPI 
if I want to do that, use that somewhere else, I can do that, and so on. Now, this is a question that comes up frequently. Yes, in fact, if anybody has it, I don't have it saved in this browser, but there is a great tool, and I don't remember now if it's called Pixel Ninja or Ninja Pixel or uh, Ninja to Inches or something, but it has the word Ninja in it somewhere. If anybody can remember what that is, I have it saved as a bookmark, and so I don't even remember what it's called. But that's a great tool. Let me see if I can grab that real quick. Hang on just a second, because this helps you drastically. Um, it really does. Does anybody have that? Because I, I can't find it real quickly here. Um, but you need to save that as a bookmark and use it all the time. Because if you want to know how to change something from, nope, that's not it. Uh, that's that's how to resize your image. It, it's it has the word ninja and pixel in it. <laughs> that's all I can remember. Uh, hold on a second. Let me see if I can find it right here. Yeah, it's called ninja units. That's it. It's called ninja units. And that's a great calculator. It'll be able to take you back and forth and so on. Mike's saying pixel zoomer to find the container size, and that's a really good idea. I had um, I had that on an extension, and when I would do the webinars, it would cause the re webinar to crash. It took us three weeks to figure out what was making the webinar crash, and it was that was a uh, you may run into a max file size issue with resizeimage.com or .net. Yeah, you may run into a max size. I have done that before. But the Ninja units will help you drastically. You'll be able to figure out what, how to convert from pixels to inches, and it'll give you based upon the DPI, all kinds of stuff. So uh, that's a very, very helpful tool. All right, now this is this is this is my cover image over here. Now, if I'm gonna create four volumes and I'm gonna do one and uh, Art's gonna do one and Don's gonna do one and Larry's gonna do one, then we'll have four volumes. I have four different authors. Let me show you the fastest way to do this. I have actually saved these, okay? You see this? I saved this by doing this. Now I've saved that. Do you see on my right hand menu where it says group? I've grouped them together. I'm taking action to something that's on the canvas. So I'll find it on my right hand menu and there's my group image. So I group them together. I have the option to save that group. And when I hit save the group, it's going to save it. I go back over here to graphics and you'll find it because I'm going to add something to my canvas, right? And I can, and I've got it saved right here. And I can do that. Now to edit that, I have to ungroup it. We had that discussion last week. Somebody had a question about uh, how come I can't edit the buttons because they've been grouped together. You have to ungroup them. Okay. All right, everybody with me so far? Let me show you a very fast way to create four different volumes and do it quickly, okay? What I'm gonna do is save this image. Now I've already done this, so, the, so, so we have it quickly available here. Uh, I'm gonna save this image and I'm gonna import it. Here's my image. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is let me get rid of everything I had before. All right, I'm gonna group those together and save them as a group, or uh, delete them as a group. Now, that leaves me just with this section down here, and that's gonna go away. So this is my, this is my image that I saved and imported again. Everybody with me? I have that as an import. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over here to my group, or to my graphics tool. I'm gonna go to my groups, 
I'm going to grab this. I'm going to pull this right over the top of this. It's positioned perfectly. I'm going to change that to four. I'm going to change that to Larry. Does that make sense? Now I'm ready. Rather than saving the entire project and then hoping that nothing has, I, I haven't made a mistake, I haven't slipped, I have, nothing's jumped out of the way, nothing's going weird. I just simply changed this. Everybody understand that? Is that a time saver? The more complex the cover is, the more elements that are on it. Sometimes people say, man, I brought that back up and one of my elements went behind the other. You eliminate it by creating a single image out of it and changing the section that needs to be changed. Eliminate your headaches every chance you get. This is the easiest way to eliminate the headache. Now, if this was a really complicated image, I've added, uh, I've added options to create a headache. When it's a single image, and all I'm doing is changing this section right here, then I've made my headaches really simple. Does that make sense to everybody? All right, the next thing that we're gonna do, and I'm gonna stop sharing this screen, and so I, I, I'll bleak out here for just a second, and I'll be right back with a different screen, okay? We're going to talk about mock design for just a minute. Well, before I go, before I do that, um, Kim had asked a question earlier. Kim, what was your question that you had asked earlier that I said I wanted to I wanted to try to address? Anybody remember what that was? I should have written it down. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I, I just simply don't remember what it was. I, I try to remember those. I usually write them down. Um, oh, it was the, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It had to do with the PowerPoint, um, had to do with the PowerPoint. So hang on a second, let me get this here. We'll go back out to the dashboard. And somewhere here i think it's under demos it was from way back we had under my templates powerpoint demo so I've saved it as a template. And this is your size right here. Just flip that the other way around. Uh, no, that's correct for landscape. This is for the smaller size. Um, but if you'll use uh, the, the Ninja tool, you'll be able to, to get that correct. The size up here at the top, I'm sorry, that is hard to read, and I apologize, Tammy. It's 1024 by 768. The thing to do is to get your size set like you like it and then save it as a, as a template. And you all know how to do that. We did that a couple of weeks ago. 
Yeah, that's the one's going to require some work, Rob. So I'm going to have to do that over the next. I'll have to. I'll have to prepare that because I don't have one ready at this point in time to do that. So, but that's a great question. When I go to my designs, I can take this design that we just had a minute ago. I can take this design right here. When I select this image in the upper right hand corner where it says options, it's the little gear icon. And then I can come down here to save as a template. And it's the last option. When I save it as a template, it will appear under my templates. I already have that one saved as a template. I could save this one as a template and show you. Save it as a template. And then when you go back over here and select a template, and I select my templates, then that will be that image will be available there and I can edit it from here. Okay. Joanne, that's the reason why I went to great length to explain where things are. Okay. And I'm, I'm trying, I'm doing my best to try to explain where things are, uh, as, as we go. Yes, the templates will move, the images will move, everything will move exactly as it has before. They will all be available, they will all work inside HTML5. That's the issue that they're tackling right now is making sure all those conversions work as they do. And, uh, and, and you have no surprises. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to learn to slow down and I try to cram, cram cram too much stuff into the into the time that we have yeah not gonna happen john so um let's let me stop sharing this and i will switch screens okay and i have to stop that one and share this one This may be the simplest tool you will ever see. This may be the simplest tool you will ever see. It's Mogzai. And there's, I don't know, somewhere over 500 mockups that are available here. Um, if you'll notice, the recommended size is 1020 by, uh, 1920 by 1080. 1920 by 1080, y'all see that. Um, Robin, Robin's asking a question. This is the reason why I wanted to talk about it today. Um, if you'll notice up here, we're at version 1.06. Yesterday, if you tried to log in yesterday, there was an issue logging in from, from the Z Suite. Um, you, you may try it again today. Um, if, if you're not able to log in, that may be the reason. Uh, AC, if you're having an issue, you might try, because I, I can't see this. And so, when I roll my mouse over the top of it, I see it. There's this, there's this sync button that's up here at the top. And when I roll my mouse off of it, I don't see it at all. So right next to your email, um, or right next to the name of your stuff in the, uh, in the upper right hand corner where your account information is at right next to that, there's a, there's a sync button. I could not see that for the life of me. In fact, I had to have Rose point out to me where it was at because I just couldn't see this, but now I see it. Now that I've seen it, I see it, okay? Nope, Mogzine is not gonna be cloud-based, not at this point in time, okay? But if you, if you use the sync button, what it does is it downloads the most current version to you and, and as well as all of the mock-ups. So if your mock-ups don't match, yeah, I know, I told Rose the same thing. It's a problem with having old eyes. Um, but, it, but if you don't think that your mock-ups match or if they don't seem to work like you think they should, then hit this resync button. It will make sure that everything is up to date for you. Okay. Now, the great thing about this is, this is a dynamic mock-up, 
And what that means is I put this image in, which is the very first image we started with. I put that image in. It is the size right here, 1920 by 1080. And so when you put that image inside of, and you do that really simply by just simply adding the image right here, and it will give you, and, and I selected, I downloaded that image from Uzine. I created it in Uzine, downloaded it from Uzine, and then I uploaded it from here. So here's the image. Now, take a look at it in all the other mockups. It's dynamically fit all of those screens. How many of you think that's really cool? I mean, we talked about this years ago, but how many of you think that's a pretty cool way to create a mock-up? Instead of having to create a different size for each one of these devices in the mock-up, it's a dynamic mock-up, which means that it will fit all of those that are in landscape. So you actually have two, if you were to look at the presets of MockZine in UZine, you have two, and that's it. You only have two sizes. You have one that's called desktop and one that's called iPhone or phone. I, think, I don't remember which of the two it is. But one is in landscape mode and one of them is in portrait mode. When you look at the devices across here, it automatically makes those look amazing in the devices that you have. All right. We'll take an, uh, an iPad here. Now, see, this iPad is going the other direction, so it's going to distort the image. But if you remember, what's my what kind of output am I looking for? Do I want my image to be in the landscape mode or don't want it to be in portrait mode, then I, I create my image in landscape or portrait mode. I'm looking for my output because this one I would have done in portrait mode. And so I would have selected the preset for the phone. AC, you'll have to take that to support. I. I that's the best advice I can give you is to resync. And if the resync doesn't do it, then you'll have to check with, with, um, with support. And it is the weekend. So, I mean, it's officially the weekend. Yes, this is a downloaded a version. It is not, I love this image right here. This, is, this operates not on the cloud, but it operates inside of your. You can't resolve the problem here, Ralph. I'm sorry. Um, like I said, there should be over 400 or uh, over 500. I think my, when I, when I did my sync, I think my sync had um, 540 or 555. I don't remember which two it was. Something like that. But really cute images, really cool stuff. Um, you do have t-shirt images. And like I said, again, you, you got to think about what's my what, what I want my output to be. And these are not, and we, we go into great detail about this. I spent better part of three weeks talking about how do you create t-shirt designs. These are only intended to demo. They're not intended to be the, the I, I don't send this to my print on demand company and have them do that, okay? I, I, I send the image, but this is just, the purpose of a mock-up is not to, I, I'm not gonna send this hat to a print on demand company to make this hat for me. I have to send the image to that hat company and have them make the hat for me. Okay. Now I have some options and you see, I used one of those. 
when I, I don't remember which of these images that I used for today's, for today's webinar announcement. It might've been that, no, it wasn't that one. But you have some options and one of the options is that I can crop this, okay? So if I select the crop tool, well, I say you can crop it. Like I said, I just loaded this, so let me see if I can get it. I can't get the crop tool to work. Sometimes I have a clash with something. So let's see here. This, I can actually change this image. I can do some things with this image and have it still dynamically fit. Now we're leaving a space up at the top. So I want to make sure that I don't do that again. And do that from right here. All right. All right, the purpose of a mock-up is to get attention. That's the purpose of a mock-up. I'm not doing this so people can read this screen. I'm only doing it to get attention. And you may need to go to the mock design site in order to get updated. Because the, the current version is one point. 0 0.6, that's the current version. All right, any questions about mock design that I'll, I'll try and I'll try to answer. When you go over here, way down on this list, you get past the t-shirts. I think there's some other stuff down here as well. Like I said, I haven't updated mine for a while. I don't see it. Thought we had some. Yeah, here's where we have some other styles that are available, cups, those kinds of things. It's under this one rather than the t-shirts. This is really nice for being able to show this to a client. You create a, um, you create a, a business card using the mock design mock-up area, and then you can, you can show it to your client like this. It's pretty cool. I've actually done that several times. All right, any questions before we go? Yeah, if you have support questions, they have to, you have to send in a support ticket. Um, there are several reasons for sending in a support ticket. Number one, we have a record of it. Number two, we have the record attached to you, so we'll know who to update. That's really important. Number three, we only have to find it in one spot rather than multiple spots. Putting it in the Facebook group won't work. Putting it, asking about it in the webinar won't work because I can't take that back. Then I have to be responsible for taking that back and, and I have to log a ticket just like you do. So, um, <clears throat> and then guess who gets notified? So make things work the way that they work the best, okay? <clears throat> And the only way to make that work is to log a support ticket. And if you're not getting an answer, it may be because an answer is not forthcoming at the moment. Maybe something that they're working on or looking into. Okay. Y'all have a great weekend. Uh, and we'll be back here next Friday.
and I'll keep you up to date on what else is going on. Be sure and watch the group if you have any questions. Uh, notifications will be put in the group as well as by email. And whatever I can tell you in the webinars, I will absolutely tell you. We'll do the best we can to keep you as informed as possible. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. You've got um, uh, a great weekend ahead. Enjoy yourself. Can somebody give Joanne the group uh, link, please? Joanne, hang on for a second. I won't close this until they get you the group link.